Hello guys, this is the Unsmooth Criminal, and this just came to me off the top of my head. What if Rimuru Tempest, from that time I got reincarnated as Slime, had a system? So yes, you, pro you if you guys have seen the anime, you probably would think that a uh, Great Sage is his system. And Great Sage is like a system, but Great Sage is more of an AI, not a system. So I'm going to incorporate the Great Sage with the system. So when he arrives in the world, he can't see anything. So everything goes to canon all the way up till he meets Val Val Valdora and he learns magic sense. Once he learns magic sense, a screen pops up in front of him. And the screen says, welcome player. You've been chosen of one in a, one in a billion to be reincarnated as a player. And then it says right after, achievement got. Plus one skill point. And Rimuru talks to Veldora about this and the door says that every one million years, there's a new player. Every one million years, there's a, there's a billion people that is reincarnated, and the one in it, one out of all of them, get a system. And in this one, he's billions of years old. He's just really lonely because he's the massive storm dragon. And no, he's not stuck with unlimited imprisonment. He's stuck with infinite imprisonment. It's a different spell. Unlimited imprisonment saps the strength of the captive. But infinite imprisonment condenses the strength of the captive and locks it away. So the captive is stuck there no matter what. The spell feeds off the strength of the captive slowly, just enough so it can keep the captive suppressed, but not enough to kill it. So he's been sitting there for more than 300 years. So when Valdora uh, met Rimuru... They immediately became friends because Veldora knew one of the original system people, one of the ori one of the old system people, and he was friends with them. So Veldora said, "Do you want to become friends?" And did all the pouty thingy and all of the convincing as canon to Rimuru, and it was perfectly fine. So he used Predator, he's in his stomach, and all that. Now here's the difference. The system says, said, 0.001% analyzation complete. MS estimated time, two years. So Rimuru knows that the estimated time for analyzation is two years. So Rimuru goes upon his days. There is no clock in the system. Absolutely no clock. So he's still the one little ripple that he thought he made was still the massive ripple. But it's the same timeline from him 
eating Veldora with infinite imprisonment and uh, leaving the cave. So I'm going to skip to when he leaves the cave, but I'll be right back. Here's where there's another difference in the timeline. So when he goes to leave the cave, he talks to the adventurers instead of just letting them walk by. And the adventurers freak out and run away. And when they get back to their guild, like a week later, the they report seeing a slime that could talk. And he killed Masticos. <laughs> Funny. Now nah, actually report. And all three of them look at him like he's crazy and say, no, we actually saw a slime that could talk. Then he tells them to go have like a few days off and go on a scouting expedition of the Great Force of Jura, where the Goblin Village is being set up. Now, while they were still exploring the cave, while the adventurers were still exploring the cave, uh, Rimuru ran into the goblins. And this time, he knew that he was leaking magicules, and he played it off like he was an omni omnipotent being, that was super strong and vowed to help the goblins and he helped them the exact same way he did in canon a lot of this is just going to go to canon but after he helped them his mimic skill that was level one is now level two that's when that's when he ate ranga's dad his mimic skill went from level 1 to level 2. So, he was, instead of a normal dire wolf, a tempest wolf. Tempest star wolf. Then, oh, he's also level 10 right now. Now, he's, uh... He's named all of them. And now he's on a mission to get craftsmen. And instead of saying blades that are the exact same, he says blades that will change depending on who wields them. And Kaiju, because everything has gone to canon so far in the trip, Kaiju says, we know that because Magic Steel, Magic Steel Blades are already changing blades. And Rimuru says, no, not like that. Then he forms a hand out of his slime because he's been practicing uh, his manipulation of his slime. And he, get, and he got the skill Formation. Where he could form a, he could form um, simple objects. And it's currently level three. Now he can form a hand. So he grabs one of the swords that he mimicked and it turns into a gun. And Kaiju is looking at this like he's crazy and like it's a magic weapon, which it is. And Rimuru sees the skill pop up of Gunsman. And I will be right back. So after the uh, presentation of the gun, Kaiju, not Kaiju, yeah, Kaiju, uh, asks 
to see it. And when he gets a hold of the gun, it transforms back into a sword, then transforms into a hammer. A hammer with a small side and a big side. So it looks like a forger's hammer. And he looks shocked. Because his weapons can't do more than one transformation. And then evolve off that transformation. And he asks Rimuru if he can come with after he turns these swords in so after like 10 minutes he after like 10 minutes he gets all the swords ready and takes them to the um no he takes them straight to gazelle dorgo because he has connections still to gazelle and when he walks in to Gazelle's office, Gazelle greets Kaiju and Kaiju, yeah, Kaiju, and the Dord brothers. And then he asks, Who is this slime? And Kaiju says, This is Rimuru Tempest. And I have pledged loyalty to him to teach his uh, village how to craft and survive. And then the Dord brothers chime in of, he's the one that gave us the potion. Gazelle's eyes widen, remembering that the potion donated from a prisoner was given to the Dord brothers and the, har the arm that was almost lost was completely healed, like nothing happened. <sighs> So, he stands up, and he walks to the slime, and greets him like a king, and the slime goes, yo, and Gazelle is a little shocked, but doesn't show it, so next thing that happens is Gazelle tells them to relax and be casual. And Rimuru was already casual because he kind of can't get anywhere close to not being casual. And starts talking to Gazelle and saying that all he wanted to do was come here and find craftsmen for his village. To help raise the survivability of his village. And Gazelle asks, what is your village? And Rimuru says it's a goblin village in the great forest of Jura. And he's shocked a little bit more, thinking, because he was thinking that it was a village of intelligent slimes that it were low ranked and not very strong. When he heard hobgoblin village, goblin and hobgoblin village, he was floored at this point. So Gazel Dorgo goes, How about this? You take Kaiju. And you smith. And Kaiju says, about that. I need to show you something. And then Kaiju says, gives Rimuru a piece of bone. And Rimuru's like, what's this for? And Kaiju says, I remember you saying that you had a m skill called Mimic. And it's going to be a lot easier to talk to you if you have a human form. And then Kaiju goes into a story of how he was attacked by a group of raiders. And this is a bone from a human. A female human. That was burnt alive. And so Rimuru takes it and takes the form of this. And he currently has a magic, 
Magisteel silk shirt and shorts on, which transform into this. And King Gaj Gajil, I think it's Gajil. King Dorgo. was surprised that the mimic skill actually worked for humans and they start talking and it's completely normal for Rimuru to talk in a human form then Rimuru says that he was reincarnated and Ga and Gajil immediately goes okay I want an alliance And he goes, are you sure you want to forge an alliance? Because I'm just a small, I'm just the leader of a small goblin village. He goes, I want to form, forge an alliance. You have Ka a Gajil, which, or Kaiju, you have Kaiju, which already makes you a valuable asset because of his smithing abilities and uh, Gaj uh, Kaiju immediately butts in again saying uh, my king that's what we're here to talk about and then he pulls out the hammer and he lays it on the desk and he says my king please pick it up and King Dorgo picks it up and it matches his sword that he currently has to the dot and he's flabbergasted because it was just in the shape of a hammer. And then it switched to a base magic sword. Then into his sword. And Rimuru then pulls out two guns. Saying that he's not very good with these. But these are his preferred weapons. And then he says from my original world. These were the most powerful weapons we had. And then he points it at a wall and pulls the trigger. And a loud bang goes off. And he flinches back with the sound and then says, yeah, it's a lot louder than I remember. And then an idea pops in his head. Suppressor. A magic steel, a magic steel suppressor. So he makes a tiny suppressor. I'll be right back. And he thinks, oh, I need a suppressor on it. So he drops the gun or puts it in his holster, which he's made with his Magisteel silk and then picks it up again. And the gun shifts into one of these, which is a very cool gun because it's it's a uh, it's a gun with a it's a pistol with a built-in suppressor in it and then it has little barrel attachments that increase the noise cancellation of it the more barrels you have but it also increases the weight so yeah right here this is the i think this is the max that it can go i don't know this is what it looks like when he pulls it out of the holster. Again, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, and then he fires it again and it makes a hole in the exact same spot because he aimed it slowly. And now he looks at these and then the skill pops up saying plus 10% XP. And... Rimuru thinks, oh, just shooting this gun gives me experience. Then he looks at his magical count, which it does show his HP and his magical count. And it shows that his magical count has diminished by a percentage. Each shot takes 0.5% right this second. And he looks at it confused. Then he looks down and he sees the shells of the gun are evaporating into black mist. 
And then he thinks, okay, that's strange, but let's go with that. So he's going to pull a Joker from Persona and have two pistols, just, just to be honest. So, uh, King Dorgo looks at this and is dumbfounded and asks if he could see how it works. And Rimuru says, sure, and takes the gun apart like he's an expert, and it gains plus 50 XP, and then it shows level up to skill. And then it says underneath the skill, minus 50% ammo consumption rate. And he's like, why would I need minus 50% ammo consumption rate? And then it says underneath, plus one barrel to all guns. So, Rimuru says, okay, and then he puts it back together. Then it says plus 5 XP. And then pretty much everything else goes to canon. They leave. There's nothing there. He gets back and he has to name all the rest of the goblins. But this time he does not go into sleep mode. He gets to 50... 1% done, and it says level up. Place point resets magicules. So he places the point in dexterity, and it shows gun accuracy from 50% accurate to 40 or no, 51% accurate. And is like, okay, this is cool. Then he's like, okay. He asked Gajil. Or not Gajil. Gajil's the king. No, Gajil? Gajil. The smith dwarf. Kaiju. Kaiju. He asked Kaiju to make him a Magisteel Greatsword. And he asked Rimuru to be more specific. And Rimuru says, can I get a sword that is worth 50 pounds of Magisteel? That uses 50 pounds of Magisteel. And his eyes widen, asking why would you need a sword that weighs 50 pounds of Magisteel? And... He says, if I'm correct, this will be a very powerful weapon. And he's like, sure, okay. And when he's done, it looks like Guts's greatsword. Rimuru grabs it, and it changes into Guts's greatsword. And then he thinks, I'm not a swordsman. I need a gun, so he grabs it with one hand and waits. Then it slowly starts shifting after like five seconds. It slowly starts shifting into a handle. And then it shifts to a box with what looks like a belt into a drum. And Rimuru, knowing his guns, because he was a weeb otaku and a gun fanatic. In his old life. He immediately knows what gun this is. And he starts thinking. How would this gun be suppressed? Then he thinks of many different ways. And comes up with the idea of. Only having one barrel. 
and the barrel be internally suppressed. Like the gun of... Um, like the pistols I showed you. The barrel is internally suppressed while the gun is just normally loud. So... While it's changing, he tells everybody to find him a giant rock and use dyes and pigments to draw a dot, then circles around it. And everybody basically going, worshipping every beckon and command he makes, does it as fast as possible. And by the time the gun is finished... It has two barrels, and it looks like a browning. I think it's browning. Yeah. It looks like a browning. Anybody's played Call, Call of Duty uh, Nazi Zombies? You'll know what a browning is. But it looks like a browning. With a thick barrel. But he goes up to the stand, and... He goes up to the target and points his gun. It does not have a stock because it also has the handles of a, of a Vulcan cannon. So he clicks the trigger and it starts firing off really fast. Then he looks at his magical count and it's now left him at 1%. And he only fired... 10 rounds. And he sees Gunman has leveled up three times. And the skill Heavy Weaponry has leveled up once. Light Infantry er, Heavy Gunner leveled up once. Light Infantry once. Medium Infantry zero times. And he tells Kaiju to make a greatsword like he normally would make a greatsword and not use 50 pounds of Magisteel. And this is all pure Magisteel, too. So he's like, uh, okay. And Kaiju makes it one. And Rimuru grabs the handle and it slowly transforms into what looks like a rifle. And it transforms into a, Barrett, a BMG 50 caliber. Barrett 50 cal. And he's like, oh crap, this is my strongest weapon. And he looks at the descriptions of each of his guns, because he has an inventory. And it says 9mm nine nine millimeter for both pistols. Then it says, I think it was... Five five six? No. I'm gonna say the Browning shot a fifty and his fifty caliber shoots a fifty. AP incendiary rounds. Yeah, AP incendiary rounds. And he's like, okay, so this is for armor and this is for gunning people down and this is for stealth so he starts using his weaponry every single day and since he stays in human form 90% of the time now when the adventurers show back up in the forest he pulls out the pistols and says what the hell are you doing here to them because he can't see them right now. He just knows that they're behind him. So he pulled the pistols and is pointing them behind him. And he asks, what the hell are you doing? And they said that they are patrolling the Great Force of Jura for any sp suspicious activity. And they ask, who are you? And he says, my name is Rimuru Tempest. I'm the leader of a goblin village. 
And the leader goes, wait, Rimuru Tempest is a slime, not a human. Then Rimuru finally turns around and goes, oh, it's you, dimwits. And then transforms into a slime. And goes, hey oh And transforms back into human, going, this is easier for me to communicate. And by this time, he has slowly gotten used to the, and I hate how this is going to work, but I'm making this work, the customization tab for his human form. He gave himself long hair. He gave, him the, gave himself the parts of a man and also parts of a female. So he has breasts and a dick. What weebs and otakus do for pleasure. <laughs> but on with the story still. So they catch up and he invites them over to the village and when they get there they... Uh, Rieger, um, no, Rieger gives them food, and Rieger says, I don't know if this was a good idea, because just look, and he walks in and sits down and sees a new person that he didn't see when he first got introduced, got reunited with them. No, they did not go to the bar, and no... Kaiju and the Door Brothers did not get kicked out of uh, uh, the armed city of Dorgon. He sees Shizu. And he transforms into a slime and goes to, to see if he can identify what planet she's on. He goes... I'm not a bad slime slurp. She laughs and they look at him like he's crazy because they know he's not a bad slime. And he transforms back into his human state and goes, I knew it. You're from Japan. And she goes, yeah. And then the adventurers ask what do you mean and he says i was transported into this world via reincarnation and shizu says i was summoned here as a hero and i'll be right back so after they discuss some stuff about why they're there and what's happening with the forest He walks over to Shizu and asks her to follow him. And he leads her up to the hill and grabs her shoulders and, and tells Great Sage to play his memories and show them to her. And since Great Sage is a little bit more helpful and he can control her a little bit better, she immediately knows what to show Shizu. Instead of the elf boobs, it's the Tokyo Tower and all that stuff. And then Shizu has a attack from Ifri, and Rimuru sees this and then uses Predator and eats Ifri from Shizu. And then Rimuru says, the only way you can fulfill what you want is if you become a party member. And then a screen pops up in, in front of Shizu and it says, do you wish to join Rimuru Tempest's party? And Rimuru says, if you don't want to join my party, 
and you want me to take care of everything, just decline. But if you want to see everything through and have me help, accept. So Shizu accepts because he was kind of smooth talking her. And they go back to the village and Shizu is a lot more lively than normal. Because she feels like she's young again. Because she kind of is. And she now has a system in front of her, telling her whatever she has. And it shows her age, but she doesn't feel her age. She feels like she's still 24. And she starts messing around with Rimuru a lot more. And Rimuru and Shizu get to know each other a little bit better. And by the time the three have to leave, they say goodbye to Shizu. Because Shizu says that with a contract, now she has to stick near Rimuru. And they ask what kind of contract, and she says a private contract. And Rimuru walks in and says, I'm the hero that she's needed. She was a summoned hero, and every hero needs a hero, so here I am. And they're like, okay, they say, good they say goodbye, and Ifrit never attacks. Because the next day, uh... Um, Shizu and uh, Rimuru go to the cave where Veldora was and starts using their fire. And since uh, he doesn't have the skill to de degenerate, from Shizu, she cuts a finger off and it starts to disappear. And he's like, what the hell was that for? And she's like, I have this little chunk left. You need to eat this so you can use skills better and get skills from other creatures. And she hands him the ever diminishing finger it was her ring finger, too, so... Uh. And he eats it and gets the form of Shizu, so he transforms slightly into what it looks like Shizu. So... Now he's flat-chested. <laughs> he's flat-chested and he doesn't have a gender now. And he looks more like a child. So the next thing that happens is he gets an, an alert from Ranga. And Shizu sees the alert too. But she doesn't get to, to hear Ranga's voice. And this is also the same time when they say, do you want a feast? And he goes, yeah. Let's have a feast. And Shizu, who has seen a gun before but never knew how to use one, saw Rimuru pull out two pistols. And she asks, are those guns? And he goes, yes, these are guns. But they take magicules to use. And all of a sudden, he steps and teleports. He used Shadow Step, like Ranga can. And he shows up, and 
he points the gun at the ogre princess and has an illusion or has a what looks like a flame flaming crossbow in his hand pointed at her head and he tells them to stop let's talk this out and she's completely shocked that she got that he got behind her and Benny Maru is like, oh god, I need to save my sister, so let's stop fighting and talk this out. And he's not hiding his appearance with Shizu's mask, and Shizu's not wearing her mask. So, Benny Maru asks, why are you leading hobgoblins and disgusting pigs you Majin and starts asking him why he did what he did and Rimu tilts his head going I don't lead pigs I just lead, lead a small goblin village and he points the other gun the other direction of or the gun Pointed the direction of his units. That direction. I lead a goblin village over there. I don't lead any ogres. Orcs or. I don't lead any ogres. No. Orcs. I don't lead any orcs. There are orcs. And. Benny Maru asks, how can we trust you? And Rimuru points his gun at one of his servants and shoots. And the servant feels a pain and then is perfectly fine. Then Rimuru says, what do I lead in my village? And what are my rules? And the servant, which is Rigard, says, Sir, your rules are don't belittle other races. Don't pick fights that you don't want that you don't want to fight. And don't mess with humans. And uh, Benny Maru's eyes widen because he knew that there was no magic involved with telling him that. There was no mind control involved with him telling him that. There was just the simple question of, what are my rules? And then they drop their guard and say, we are sorry. And we want to repay the favor of accidentally injuring your people. And Reamer, who has shot every single one of his people say there's no need I've healed them all and they look around and see that all of his troops are healed and now I'm going to end it here where we're going into the orc lord arc then we're going to go into the student arc well then we're going to go into the relationship then the student arc and then the um, Charybdis arc, which I feel like is going to be really fun. So, talk to you guys later. Bye!